Hey, I'm Alex Rome, and welcome to Mako. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, today, what I wanted to show you was this trick that I've never actually shown in a video. And it's just something that makes my life so much better, so much more fun. It makes making ma melodies and bass lines and chord progressions interesting. And it's really sick. I'm going to teach you how to make this sort of sound perfect. It's like kind of like a vocal pad, but an interesting ARP style vocal pad. You might think, okay, it's simple, Alex, whatever, I came to this video for that. But listen, everything else behind it. Oh, shit. Oh man, I'm not an amateur, I swear. Hold on, ready? This is gonna, this sound's gonna sound like this much better. Cause it's not coming out of, out of my speakers now. And then like, it like progresses as I go. And then here's the middle progression. So this, the point of this vocal isn't to be a melody. I use these in the background. But here's the thing that makes these vocals sick. The reverb, the high amount of reverb, and I'm smashing it with the compressor, usually like OTT. So I'm going to show you how to make something like this. Because I've sold these in my Sounds of the Future pack, and everybody... No, it wasn't in my Sounds of the Future pack. I made things... Well, yeah, it was. I made certain things like this. I didn't actually make this exact thing, because I like selling vocal chops dry, so you can edit them and manipulate them however you wish. So that's why I never usually do things that are soaking wet with reverb like this. Because, you know, you're kind of limited and you have to use it that way. That's why I don't really include rev like heavy reverb on vocal chops when I sell them. But let's take this. Okay, let's take this melody here. And what you're going to have to do R. is load up a vocal chop. This vocal chop is a sample that... R. Is of Lauren you guys are my vocalist Lauren aka my girlfriend that I make all the songs with with vocals on R, 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 R. so she's just saying like R that's weird R, I don't know I don't even remember recording her saying R but that's the melody R, 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 R. that's cool you could leave it like that if you're boring but we like to spice things up a little bit. So the next step is to add a reverb of your choice. You could add Logic's reverb by all means. But me, I don't like to use Logic's reverb for something like this. Let me tell you why. Because Logic's reverb is a little bit more thin than a reverb that you can find like on the internet, third party. So I like Valhalla Vintage Verb. A lot of people have the brother plug into this Valhalla Room. I like Valhalla Vintage. Why? Because it's very heavy and dense. It gets really wide and big, the sound. So you can apply it to anything, and that sound will just be a completely different sound. This reverb is so thick, sometimes I don't even consider it a reverb. My phone's over here. It keeps flashing at me. Sometimes this reverb gets so thick that I don't even consider it reverb anymore. I just consider it a pad, which is crazy. I love when reverb can do that. On the flip side, I don't use it for every reverb purpose because it is so dense. But for this, I like to use it. Here's what it sounds like. R-R-I-R-R-I-R-R-I-R-R-I-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-
and then you jack up the decay on this shit. Talk about thick. But now it kind of sounds like the vocal is behind the reverb. To fix that, you use a little thing called OTT. What does OTT do? A lot of people ask me this, and OTT is actually a free plugin. You can look up on the internet. X for OTT. OTT brings the wet signals or the dry signals, like the vocal chop, and it kind of sits it out in front of all the wet signal behind it. That's if you have OTT applied to both the dry and the wet signal. So you can use this for anything. We slap on OTT with a hundred percent depth. <laughs> Listen to that compression. Without it. With it. Damn. That is crazy. I'm going to turn the length down a little. I think I'm a little heavy. Alright, there we go. I'm liking it. I add a little bit of bounce to it. A lot of the times. Because it kind of adds movement. Anything that's stagnant like this, I think it's best. I personally think it's best. You always take that extra step to add movement to it, right? Because what that's going to do is just, it's like that extra step towards making it less boring. The more movement something has, the more unique you can make it sound, the better you're going to be in the long run with that sound because it's not going to get boring and it's not going to get dull. Nicky Romero's kickstart, here we come. This pad is so versatile, you could add whatever you want to it. You can add whatever bass line you want as long as it's in key and test out the different emotions you can get with it. But we're not done. I'm going to EQ this anytime I have a vocal pad that's meant for the background and that's not the main lead. I cut the highs off of it most of the time and I obviously cut the lows out but that's like standard practice. We should know that by now you low cut everything that's not a bass line. So I'm just going to let this flow and I'm going to cut off all the high frequencies. Why? So it doesn't crash into the lead. Come on, we should know that. <laughs> and it actually makes things sound like they're farther away. At least a lot of the times. A lot of the times things like these are great guidelines to build a whole section of a, of a song around. You lay one of those down and you have no you have no idea how to make a drop or what to do for your drop or what to do for your verse or your bridge or your intro. I promise you lay something like this down and just harmonize with it and then take it out. And then you'll get some gold. And a lot of times you could just keep it in there. So right here I have a bass line. I have a really sorry excuse for a bass line right here. Let's thicken this out. That paddle work anywhere. I never showed how to make that before either. That's just like one of my favorite sounds of the world. You can make it pan from ear to ear. You can make it duck. You can use it in your drops, your bridges, your verses. Record yourself saying R into the mic and make like some weird kooky ass melody with it. Add a lot of reverb to it. OTT it, duck it, EQ it, and slap it into a song or start a song from scratch with it. I guarantee you won't be let down. 
that will be sick. If you guys took any value from this video, give me a big old thumbs up. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe here if you're new and turn on the little bell thing with the notifications. Check out my website alexroomsound.com. I got private lessons on there. I got my sample packs. I have my course on there. We got more courses in the making. And have fun with it guys. alexroomsound.com. Peace out.